Welcome to Kamna TV Main News. I am Precious Mzea Sakaleji. The headlines. FDD leader Edith Nawakwe's stepson hit back over the properties conflict case. PEP rejects Kawata poor results as Kawata residents remind Tayengwa to fulfill his campaign promises. Environmentalists back in court over Forest Reserve No. 27. In international news, EU military mission in car sets out condition to resume operations. And in sports, Chelsea's Thomas Tuchel happy with the calm window. Join me with the details after this commercial. From 31st January to 6th February 2022, Zambia's spiritual atmosphere will take a paradigm shift. The Bible says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Zambia, a nation under God conference, will be starting at 2045 hours to 2230 hours. Live on Kamnet TV channel 274 on DSTV, Go TV channel 98 and Topstar channel 106. Speakers will be Bishop Stanley Simnola, Grace Ministries, Dr. Nervas Mumba, Victory Ministries, Apostle Michael Mutemwa from South Africa, Bishop Nelly Chikwanda, New Life Christian Center, Apostle Rick Kamwanga, Risen Life Church International, Bishop Joy Makando, Bread of Life, Bishop Alex Mwami of Holy Ghost Firehouse from South Africa, and your hosts, Pastors Victoria and Moses Chilua. Camnet Television, not, not just another, another channel. In other main news in detail, residents of Kawata constituency in Lusaka have reminded their newly elected member of parliament, Andrew Tayengwa, to fulfill his promises as he attends office. Some marketeers spoken to our Chilenjian markets told Camnet News that the market and surrounding areas still have erratic water supply system and inroads. On the 4th of January 2022, United Party for National Development candidate Andrew Tayengwa won the election to represent the people of Kawata against his closest rival, Clement Tembo of the Patriotic Front. The Kawata Bar elections has come to a close Friday, February 4, 2022, following an official announcement by the Electoral Commission of Zambia, who declared the United Party for National Development candidate, Andrew Tayengwa, as winner. But for the constituents in the area, the journey has just begun for Mr. Tayengwa to perform to the expectation of the people of Kawata constituency. In a random interview, the residents from Kawata all the way to Chilenja markets have shared their expectations. Being like what uh, MP and Manja, what is supposed to do to help the community in, in terms of like uh, looking on the modernity system here in Kawata, some drainage system they are bad. Namaro uh, Zena, not okay. At least you need to set on that. Uh, some of the things that the youth will need, I think education is actually very important for a youth. Certain youth, uh, the youths. They need things like sponsorship, identifying those who are most vulnerable, who actually need to be sponsored to go to some higher learning institutions. Also, in trying to ensure that youths are introduced to certain skills that they can independently work on their own. Traders of Chilenja Market have also voiced out. <laughs> At least what we want is that vendors they should come inside. We don't have business. As you can see, there's no one to buy. Since morning, we don't have customers. So we want vendors from outside to come inside so that we can be fair. To the youth, this is the time for them to be empowered as they echo their call for necessary tools so that they too contribute to the national economy. Tanzako my youth, yako wati kuwa pushing in ako vija vako wati. Kairi ni wambiri my youth wali muka wata vako wati. Wana siliza maskuzi, 
wankala che walibe sometimes walibe bantua kutuanga wata ndeze kutuwa waende kuma kuma koreji okuyamba zinima maweks so at least for MP if maybe he can do something to the youth maybe I think kawata it can be a very good constituents. Like for my youths, for a Wambi, that quite a paku, a paku moku, never to let a track of free education. No banga to a yakuja kuskuru, could it free education? Ama books to the Fuaika, quite okay, but it to lay ama books, so to the Fuai ama books, ama buses, go for Valela and Daben, that to the Fuai Obufi Mumu. Youth empowerment never come back. That's the most important thing. Now, when the school go in the child, Ben Chito TD, Bessa, at least of a Tristaco in power. They have since reminded the member of parliament elect to stick to his promises as he gets into office. Alex Shimba, Kamne News, in Lusaka. A historian Bezek Piri has attributed the low voter turnout in the just-ended Kabwata constituency by-election to voter fatigue due to the cancellation of the by-election from the 20th of January 2022 after the withdrawal of the United Progressive Party candidate from the rest. In an interview, Professor Piri also says in comparison to general elections, by-elections experience voter apathy leading to a minimalist vote, stating that this calls for constitutional amendments to ensure that by-elections are only held when absolute necessary. The Kabwata by-election, which was held in the 3rd of February 2022, saw a voter turnout of 27,677 out of 108,729 registered voters, representing a voter turnout of 25.46 percent. The 12th August 2021 general elections saw one of the highest voter turnouts in the country's history since independence, with an estimated 70 percent of voters in the country casting their ballot according to data from the Electoral Commission of Zambia, ECZ. By-elections, on the other hand, as in the country's history, have continued to record a low voter turnout, the case of the just-ended Kawata constituency by-election in Lusaka. The Kawata constituency by-election that was held on 3rd February 2022 recorded 27,677 voters out of a voter population of 108,729. The low voter turnout has worried a University of Zambia historian, Professor Bizek Piri, who has attributed the same to voter fatigue. He says there should be constitutional reforms to lessen the number of by-elections that are held in the country. There should be minimal by-elections. For example, uh, one of the things that was said, by-elections only, should only take place if there is a death of a member of parliament. But in cases where you are elected today under party A. Tomorrow, you say, I've resigned. I'm joining party B. And then necessitating a by-election. The NCC has said, no, in those kind of situations, there should be no by-election. If you resign because you've joined another party, the person who was number two becomes the MP. So that to avoid unnecessary expenditures because you have decided to leave the, 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 also the person with one number two. Another aspect was that, well, in the case of death, maybe we can have a system where if a member of parliament dies after being elected, then the party that he, under which party they belong to can nominate a person from their party to take up that, because it's their seat for that duration of the house. So these are some of the debates that can be considered. Meanwhile, United Party for National Development UPND Youth Chairperson Mr. Gilbert Liswaniso, while congratulating the party candidate Mr. Andrew Tayenga, who emerged victorious, says the Kawata constituency by elections demonstrated the importance of political tolerance compared to previous by elections in the country, which were marred with bloodshed as political violence was recorded on a large scale. Temptations were many in Kawata but we restrain our youths. That was a message every day. When people wake up, they go in the field, was to remind them, don't go and beat anybody. You saw our president having photo with a PF lady with a stinger regalia. That's what we want to see. So we are bringing Ubuntu. When we are talking about reuniting and rebuilding, we are serious as a party. 
we are serious. And those are demonstrations which you can see in Kawata. So we thank the people of Kawata. We thank the leadership of your PND. However, leaders of the Patriotic Front PFO's candidate Clement Tembo came second have declined to comment on the elections. When contacted, party acting president Mr. Given Lubinda and information and publicity chairperson Mr. Rafael Nakachinda said they could not give a comment. No, no, not now. Uh, for Honorable Nixon Chirangwa or whatever, I mean, I'm, you know, in meetings here, so I'm not able to give you a comprehensive uh, position. In adding the voice of the church, Bishop David Masupa says while the election was peaceful in general, there were some reports of political violence which calls for long lasting measures to the same. We are now calling upon the government of the Republic of Zambia, especially through the ruling party, to enact a standalone a, a subsidiary law to ban cardinalism in Zambia. This way, the police will have all the mandate to be able to execute the law and bring the culprits to book. The Kawata seat fell vacant in November 2021 following the death of UPND lawmaker Mr. Levi Mkandawire and was contested by nine political parties which has seen UPND candidate Andrew Tayengwa emerging victorious. Zipora Mshala, Kamnet News, Lusaka. In other news, the Opposition Patriots for Economic Progress has rejected the results in the just-ended Kawata parliamentary by-election as a true reflection of the free will of the people of Kawata constituency. Party President Sean Tembo explains that this is because of the violence which was perpetrated against his party members and supporters by the ruling UPND party. Mr. Tembo has cited an incident he claims happened on the 28th of December 2021 during the first nomination process and the second being on the nomination exercise undertaken on the 20th of January 2022 where he alleges his party members were attacked. In this regard, the opposition leader has refused to accept defeat in the Kabwata parliamentary by-election expressing intent to petition the election. The Patriots for Economic Progress candidate Henry Mulea only managed to pull 30 votes out of the total votes cast of 27,677, making him the least amongst the nine candidates. Of uh, length of the results of the Kawata parliamentary by election uh, this morning. And uh, we want to state that uh, we do not agree with the results of that by election because of the intimidation that our members and supporters suffered at the hands of the ruling UPND party, starting from the day of nominations. Our people were attacked right at the nomination center there, and this is a case which is uh, uh, before the police. And despite the assailants being identified by the victims, the police did not arrest anybody. And again, this violence followed us during the second nomination uh, process, which was done at St. Patrick's on the 20th of uh, January which caused our candidate, Mr. Mulea, to file his nomination after hours um, and uh, not uh, during the time that had been allocated to him. Um, so we believe that all these factors put together actually prevented people from voting for our candidate and even associating with us for fear of being victimized by the ruling party. The opposition leadership movement has reported the Electric Commission of Zambia to the Anti-Corruption Commission over suspected corrupt practices on its rebranding process. Presenting a letter on behalf of the party to the Anti-Corruption Commission, Party Media Director Tatila Tatila has charged that the rebranding by the electoral body smells corruption, hence the Anti-Corruption Bureau must intervene. Speaking to journalists, Mr. Tatila says it is illogical for the electoral body to spend over one million kwacha on rebranding process which saw a new logo at the expense of important exercises such as continuous voter registration.
The Leadership Movement Party has since challenged the Anti-Corruption Commission to demonstrate commitment towards the corruption fight by probing corruption issues when reported. People have been calling for continuous voter registration, issues to do with electoral reforms, but the commission found it fit to focus on giving uh, a block media house and uh, sign wave printing uh, Zambia uh, to, to bring up that, uh, that log which they gave us, uh, which a grade 12 or grade 3 can do. So we thought, no, we should not sit on this. As leadership movement, we are not cowards. Ours is jobs to the Zambian youth, ours is land with title deeds, ours is tax breaks and tax holidays to Zambian businesses and support your local team. So we thought as an electoral stakeholder we can't sit and watch ECZ operate in that colonial way. That is why today we are seeing ballot papers being printed out of this country when we are supposed to revamp government printers. Can't government printers be able to do that particular thing? Don't we have a department in, in, in the Zambian government, even under Smart Zambia? to do that particular log that they gave to that particular company. We want uh, anti-corruption to go deeper and ensure that uh, they bring out the people who are behind those things. Patriotic Front Msanzala constituency member of parliament in Eastern Province, Elias Daka says part of the constituency development fund once released will go towards the rehabilitation of roads which he has described as being in a deplorable state. In an interview with Cabinet News, Mr. Daka notes that most of the roads are in a bad state despite him trying to habilitate them before becoming the lawmaker, adding that the roads still remain one of his and the community's priorities. The lawmaker has lamented that roads become impassable during the rainy season, making it impossible for people to undertake their economic activities such as transporting their farm produce. Then the other part of man, you know Musanzara is a rural constituency, which has got a lot of challenges, particularly on roads. You saw me the other time I was in the constituency, I was stuck because of the bridge at Lusangazi Bridge. The roads are literally very bad. So this time we want to make sure that if the CDF comes, we'll make sure we we'll prioritize it to roads, to health sector, to schools, so that we balance it up. The civil society debt allowance has recommended the cancellation of approximately two-thirds of the external debt owed to private lenders and other governments if sustainability is to be achieved. Alliance Chairperson Father Alex Miebe says Zambia is currently negotiating its debt restructuring with private and government creditors through the G20's new common framework. And Father Miebe says the debt restructuring process in Zambia may not, may not yield the desired result as predicted by the International Monetary Fund and the government. Meanwhile, Alliance Steering Committee member Isaac Mwaipopo says there is need for government to speed up the process of engaging creditors so that a committee of lenders can be formed and provide financing assurances. The deal was speaking at a media briefing in Lusaka Friday. The stock of public external debt amounted to 14.71 billion US dollars as of end of September 2021. Zambia became Africa's first COVID-era sovereign defaulter in November 2020 after years of chronic government of borrowing drove its debt burden above 120% of annual economic output. The Civil Society Debt Alliance, in conjunction with the Jubilee Debt Campaign United Kingdom, conducted an analysis to establish the extent of help that Zambia may require to succeed in the debt restructuring process in order to attain debt sustainability. Alliance Chairperson Father Alex Moyebe says they have recommended that debt owed to private lenders and other governments, as well as all interest payments, must be cancelled to ensure sustainability. Speaking during a press briefing in Lusaka Friday, he says the Alliance is aware that Zambia is currently negotiating a restructuring of its debt with private and government creditors through the G20's new common framework. And Father Moyebe says the debt restructuring process in Zambia may not yield much of the benefit as anticipated by the International Monetary Fund and the government.
do it, working together with our colleagues of Jubilee campaign, um, uh, UK, uh, we push the, this agenda forward, but I'll leave that to my colleagues. And I think the issue of geopolitics, uh, our international relations, and especially now for the East and the West, but now maybe living more on the East, the, the Chinese, that they, they, are, they are a great stakeholder uh, in as so far as addressing the debt crisis is concerned. And our land steering committee member, Isaac Moipopo, has recommended the need for government to speed up the process of engaging creditors so that the committee of lenders can be formed and provide financing assurance so that the process can move forward to the IMF executive board. Related to asking for forgiveness and cancellation become quite complicated and it is for this reason that we are calling uh, on the Zambian government that it should ensure that uh, a holistic approach is uh, taken as we seek to reorganize uh, Zambia's debt and it shouldn't just be a conversation of uh, restructuring in terms of buying time uh, but there should be uh, a steady effort made towards uh, demanding for consolidation of part of the debt that we have. Uh, we've seen that part of the debt that we accumulated was debt given to the Zambian government in uh, response to challenges such as uh, climate change and we think that uh, debts of this kind might need to be looked at, uh, especially that the burden uh, with regards to managing climate change largely falls on countries that are not necessarily the major causes of uh, this challenge. That Alex Shimba, Kamne News, in Lusaka. Forum for Democracy and Development leader Edith Nawakwe's stepson has told the Lusaka High Court that a day before their father's burial, Ms. Nawakwe's family demanded for her dowry failure to which he was not going to be buried. This is in a matter in which Ms. Nawakwe, an opposition political leader, has dragged her two stepsons to court over the administratorship of her late husband, Geoffrey's Hambulo's estate. According to an affidavit in opposition of an ex parte summon, Murundu Hambulo states that despite his father refusing to pay for her bride price while he was alive, Ms. Nawaku's family requested that it be done in order to signify the, ex the existence of the marriage to the late. The controversy surrounding the administration of the estate of the late Geoffrey Hambulo has intensified as the deceased children have maintained that Edith Nawakwe was not married to their father and no dowry was paid to her family. Son of the late Hambulo, Mulundu, has revealed that prior to his father's burial, Miss Nawakwe's family suggested that the late Hambulo should not be buried until his family paid a dowry to signify the existence of the marriage. This is in a matter in which Forum for Democracy and Development leader Nawakwe has dragged two of her stepson to court over the administratorship of their father's property. She wants the Lusaka High Court to restrain Mulundu and Mwemba Hambulu from acting as administrators and to stop performing any actions that affect the management of Geoffrey Hambulu's estate. In his affidavit in opposition in support of ex-party summons for an order of interim injunction and for an application of a grant letter of administration, Mr. Mulundu says his father and Ms. Nawakwe started cohabiting in 2006 after he divorced their mother, Georgina Daka, in 2005 and he always declined to make her his wife when he was alive. He disputes claims by Ms. Nawakwe that a will was discovered in her husband's laptop bag as a friend's husband and Mr. Mugala mentioned during the burial church service that their father had left an unfinished will. Says there is no need to appoint an elder to represent the interests of the children as they are not minors and are capable of administrating their father's estate and that they hold different professional qualifications. He claims that his stepmother has been sidelining them from the time they obtained a letter of administration from the court and she has been preventing them from accessing their father's estate to enable them carry out their duties as administrators. He has further alleged that Miss Nawakwe showered them with insults and refused to hand over the deceased office keys when they requested that she surrenders them. Mulundu submits before court that his stepmother 
is not willing to hand over the affairs of their father's estate to them, and she imposed herself as the sole administrator without obtaining authority from the court. Mr. Mulundu, who is a pilot, says Ms. Nawaki has grabbed his father's animals and property used in farming and has moved the same to a farm in Chisamba. The respondent has since urged the court not to grant Ms. Nawaki an injunction restraining them from executing their duties as administrators as he fears that Ms. Nawaki might misappropriate the property and that the beneficiaries will lose out. Miriam Kemba, reporting for Kamni TV News. In other news, an environmentalist has petitioned the Constitutional Court seeking an order that it orders government and the Zambia Environmental Agency to withdraw the approval of the environmental impact statement dated 7th May 2021 for being in violation of the Constitution. In this case, Robert Chimambo has cited the Attorney General and the Zambia Environmental Agency as the first and second respondent respectively. Mr. Chimambo wants an order that freedom of environmental information is a constitutional right in Zambia, and an order that mining in the Lower Zambezi National Park violates the constitution. Different stakeholders have continued to add their voice on the issue of the open pit mining project in the heart of the Lower Zambezi National Park, with the majority criticizing the move. Concerned with the further action taken, an environmentalist has rushed to the Constitutional Court, seeking that the court orders government and the Zambia Environmental Agency, ZAMA, that the mining in the Lower Zambezi National Park violates the Constitution. Mr. Robert Shmambo, who has cited the Attorney General and ZEMA as the respondent in his petition, also wants the Constitutional Court to order them to withdraw their approval of the Environment Impact Statement dated 7th May 2021 for being in violation of the Constitution. And further, an order that freedom of environmental information is a constitutional right in Zambia. Mr. Chimambo contends that open pit mining in the Lower Zambezi National Park will permanently destroy the landscape of the park and that the construction and widening of the road and the construction of the power lines in the park to facilitate the mining activities will compromise the integrity of the park and affect its ecological value. He submits that ZAMA approved an environmental impact statement for proposed large-scale mining in the Lower Zambezi without public consultation despite the area being sensitive and by failing to demand for public hearing before approving the environmental impact statement, ZAMA has contravened Article 253.1, 255.1, and 257.1 of the Constitution. Mr. Chimambo further argues in his petition that the open pit mining will displace the wild animal, leading to human-animal conflict, and the blasting of copper using explosive in the national park will disturb the wildlife and its ecological system. Hence, pray that the court grants his reliefs. Miriam Kemba, reporting for Kamni TV News. Green Economy and Environment Minister Colin Zinzovu has noted that climate change has emerged as one of the most pressing issues in Zambia, affecting social economic development and threatening to erode the country's development gain made so far. Mr. Nzovu says the frequent of droughts and dry spells, seasonal and flash floods and extreme temperature have a direct bearing on economic growth, forcing government to charting its developmental discourse aimed at improving the livelihood of the people. Speaking when he officially opened Vumbarambanda's Green Business Private Hospital in Kalumbila District, the minister says the hospital is a good example of private sector participation in enhancing climate change adoption. Mr. Nzovu has also mentioned that government has started the process of developing a green growth strategy aimed at promoting environmental sustainability and social inclusiveness. He says the green growth start strategy will outline the path that Zambia wishes to take towards a green economy, presenting an opportunity for private sector, including micro, small and medium enterprises, through green investments. 
lets me to note that Boomer's Green Business Private Hospital's motto is Green Environment, Better Future. This resonates very well with the vision of the New Dawn government's commitment to address climate change and to improve natural resource management. Climate change has emerged as one of the most pressing issues in Zambia, affecting social economic development and threatening to erode the country's development gains made so far. The frequency of droughts and dry spells, seasonal and flash floods, and extreme temperatures have a direct bearing on economic growth. As such, government has begun charting its developmental discourse aimed at improving the livelihoods of our people by way of encouraging business models that are climate smart with an effort of greening the economy. This therefore requires involvement of various stakeholders to actively participate in the activities of greening the Zambian economy to ensure sustainable development. Distinguished invited, invited guests, I'm happy to mention that government has started the process of developing a green growth strategy that will promote environmental sustainability and ensure social inclusiveness as we embark on economic recovery and growth. The green growth strategy will outline the path that Zambia wishes to take as we transition into a green economy. This presents huge opportunities for private sector, including micro, small, and medium enterprises through green investments to actively participate in the economy. You're watching Kamna TV Main News. We take our first set of commercials. We'll be back with more news after this. Team, the trajectory of the business looks very positive, and it looks like we'll be able to launch the country. She has so much data. Mom. Yes, baby. It says here, mm -hmm. global warming and climate change mm -hmm. is caused by the pollution from careless activities of human beings. Wow. Son, do you know I can turn my phone into a TV remote? How is that possible? It's so easy. Check this out. Be smart, be fast with mega data from Zamtel. Get your 15 GB mobile data for only 100 kwacha, 30 GB mobile data for only 200 kwacha, and your 70 GB LTE data bundle with free Netflix, YouTube, Facebook, and WhatsApp. Visit our Facebook page, website, or service centers countrywide for more information. Zamtel, your digital lifestyle partner. The bottom. Have you connected to the Wi-Fi on the bus? It's fast, it's amazing. I've just downloaded my books and I'm about to complete the series. It's nice, too, me. Ah, no, I'm actually watching a reality show. He's about to propose. Oh, so sweet. Make your trip seem short, yet comfortable and safe when you use the UBZ luxurious fully air-conditioned coaches that come fitted with amazing onboard entertainment, passenger information services, coffee-making facilities, and fridge for your hot and cold beverages, free and interrupted Wi-Fi for your gadgets, phone charging facilities, comfortable seats that recline to offer extra resting posture, safety seat belts, adjustable reading lights for each traveling client, and of course, clean flushing toilets for your convenience. So travel in luxury and safety with UBZ Luxurious Coaches. UBZ will always take you there. Kamne TV is becoming big and better. You can now watch Kamne TV wherever you are around the world, simply by downloading the Kamne TV app. TV up, you only use less bundles. Camnet TV, not just another channel. Welcome back. We we'll continue with the rest of the news. 
The Cleaning Association of Zambia has given a 60 days ultimatum to consumption mining in which it must rescind its decision to award a foreign company a contract to undertake laundry services which can be done by local firms. Association President Lawrence Makumbi has presented a petition to Consumption Mines and the Provincial Administration in the new Northwestern Province to rescind the decision to award a contract to a foreign cleaning firm. Mr. Makumbi says Zambians cannot be relegated to specters in their own country. He says if the Provincial Administration and the mine fail to reverse the deception, they will escalate the matter to President Hakainde Hichlema. Association of Zambia with all its members are very disappointed with the recent offer by Kansanshi Mining to a foreign cleaning company to start doing laundry services. The contract number is KMP 2650. Six, which is laundry services at Kansanshi Mine. We are disappointed because laundry services are a service that Zambians can do. We have a statutory instrument, number 22 of 2019, which makes cleaning a preserve of Zambians and Zambians only. We are disappointed because the New Dawn government is a government that has said is going to support the people of Zambia and the entrepreneurs that are in the country doing small, small business. Hence, we are calling upon President Hagainde Hichidema. We are calling upon the Minister of Mines. We are calling upon the Minister of SMEs to quickly come to our aid. And right now, we are giving Kansanshi an ultimatum of 60 days to make sure that they rescind this decision of washing of uniforms, washing of stockings, washing of underwear for miners at Kansanshi. Why should we in Zambia? today buy services from a foreign cleaning company 58 years after independence. The Tobacco Free Association of Zambia, Tofaza, has urged government to increase tobacco taxes in order to increase funding at cancer hospitals in Zambia as one way of closing the funding gap in the care treatment for cancer in the country. In an interview to FASA Executive Director Ms. Brenda Chitindi notes that tobacco use contributes to various types of preventable cancers in the country from lung to colon cancer and yet medical care for the same is costly in Zambia. Zambia has joined the rest of the world in commemorating World Cancer Day which falls on the 4th of February of every year. According to data from the World Health Organization, about 7,000 Zambians die from tobacco-related illnesses annually, while the country still has over 1 million users of the same, a population which is dominated by male adults. It is also estimated that 9,000 children between 10 to 14 years use tobacco, while the rest of the tobacco-using population is dominated by adults, both male and female. According to medical experts, the use of tobacco has continued to be the cause of preventable cancers in the country, while care for the same remains costly and out of the reach of the average tobacco user. With Zambia joining the rest of the world in commemorating World Cancer Day, Tobacco Free Association of Zambia Tofaza Executive Director Ms. Brenda Chitindi says government should ensure that tobacco taxes are revisited in order to increase funding for cancer care in Zambia. Looking at the cancer hospital, how it's... Uh how it's disturbed like that, or oh, there's a lot of cancer patients at cancer hospital. And most of those patients are due to tobacco-related cancers. And the government should enact, should implement the tobacco control bill, so that at least the, the usage of tobacco is reduced, especially among the youths and the, even children now. The, the, the state using tobacco at very very early age and for example look at women and girls the use of super it's so they have increased using sucos the girls women and all those are, are cancer cancer causing I mean they're just inviting the illnesses of cancer in their bodies Ms. Chitindi has further called for stakeholders to aggressively push for the enactment of the Tobacco Control Bill in Parliament, stating that the same continues to be sought even near facilities such as primary and secondary schools.
In Zambia, we conducted the survey on how tobacco products are being sold and advertised near schools. There are so many, so many adverts near the school. We found a lot of uh, posters, even the, the sales itself. You know what they do is just to attract the children. The tobacco products or the, the cigarettes, they put next to sweets, you know. Just when a child sees the, wants to buy a sweet, but you'll be attracted by tobacco. Because even the advert itself attracts children. Then they'll be, they'll start, they'll, be, they'll get attracted and they, this, they would start trying to, to use that uh, tobacco product. Global statistics indicate that about 9.6 million people die from cancer diseases annually, with tobacco being one of the main causes. World Cancer Day aims to raise awareness about the different types of cancer, emphasizing on early detection and care to prevent deaths arising from the same. Zipporah Mshala, Kamnet News, Lusaka. Civil Servants and Allied Workers Union Secretary General Makai Makai has called for the creation of a microfinance at the National Pension Scheme Authority to ensure that members obtain loans at low interest rate. In an interview, Mr. Makai states that had this initiative been set up long ago, there would have been no talk about the debt swap that civil servants are crying for to mitigate their financial burdens. He notes that the government should take it upon themselves to assist civil servants to find sustainable source of lending, unlike getting loans from private lenders whose interest rates are too high for the average worker. If NAPSA can start giving loans to the employees in this country so that they access loans from NAPSA at low interest rates, if that was happening, the issue of uh, the debt burden which the workers have, which we're grappling with in the public, in the public sector, we're not going to be there. Because if NAPSA was giving loans to the employees at less interest rates, what would that have meant that no employee, no government worker was going to find themselves in a, in a, in a debt trap? So, we have houses in Kalurush, those houses at this independent stadium, at the Hero Stadium, those are houses which NAPSA has built with the view of investing so that they can raise money from there. But how many of the, of the, work, of the members of NAPSA can afford to get loans and buy those houses? And can they open up a microfinance where employees or members can access loans at low interest rates? That is our concern. The United Nations World Food Program, working in collaboration with government, has reached out to 198,000 farmers with post-harvest activities aimed at preventing post-harvest loss in nine provinces of the country. WFP Program Policy Officer Zambia Country Office Oli Pambata says beneficiary farmers of post-harvest activities are predominantly smallholder farmers engaged in production so that they do not lose what they produce through post-harvest losses. The United Nations World Food Program, WFP, has reached out to 198,000 farmers with post-harvest activities aimed at preventing yield losses in nine provinces of the country. WFP Program Police Officer, Zambia Country Office, Oli Pambata, says the beneficiary farmers of post-harvest activities are predominantly smallholder farmers engaged in production so that they do not lose what they produce after harvesting. Through our post-harvest uh, activities, we have reached about 198,000 farmers and these are spread across the nine uh, provinces of Zambia. We are targeting farmers in rural areas and these are farmers who mainly are predominantly agriculture producing farmers. And Southern Province Provincial Agriculture Coordinator Dr. Max Chombe says farmers lose about 30% of their produce due to post-harvest losses. The farmers lose about 30% of their harvest through the post-harvest losses. So with that background, we have a program with the WFP, which covers the training of farmers on post-harvest losses, on how to avoid the post-harvest 
losses in the rural area. Meanwhile, beneficiary farmers are elated with the post-harvest activities introduced by WFP that include building capacity in use of hematic bags and silos to prevent crop losses after harvesting. We pack maize in these big bags and tie as we store the grain. Weavers will not enter in these bags. We stopped using chemicals to preserve the grain. These days we have no post harvest losses. It used to be affected by grain paste. Reporting, Lawrence Cavuccio in Choma. We'll take our second set of commercials. Coming next is International in Sports News. We welcome you to the wonderful world of Savenda Electronics. At Savenda Electronics, we pride ourselves in manufacturing high-quality electricity and water meters. Boasting of the first of its kind state-of-the-art manufacturing plant in Zambia, Savenda Electronics manufactures customized smart electricity and water meters of international standards for both the local and international water and electricity utility companies. Our highly computerized factory run by qualified staff makes, calibrates and electronically tests the smart meters to ensure only those meeting customer specifications are delivered to the market. Some of the main features which come with our meters include notifications about low units, tempering, low battery, and many more customized features. Savenda Electronics provides on- and off-site after-sales service and has favorable contract terms for water and electricity utility companies. Savenda Electronics, the real deal. Your skin is the biggest muscle in your body. That's why we make sure that Oracle is number one when it comes to taking care of your precious skin. Oracle Pure Petroleum Jelly and Glycerin soothes, moisturizes and keeps your skin perfect. Oracle Pure Petroleum Products for that perfect skin. From 31st January to 6th February 2022, Zambia's spiritual atmosphere will take a paradigm shift. The Bible says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Zambia, a nation under God conference, will be starting at 2045 hours to 2230 hours. Live on Camnet TV channel 274 on GSTV, Go TV channel 98 and Topstar channel 106. Speakers will be Bishop Stanley Simnola. Grace Ministries, Dr. Nervas Mumba, Victory Ministries, Apostle Michael Mutemwa from South Africa, Bishop Nelly Chikwanda, New Life Christian Center, Apostle Rick Kamwanga, Risen Life Church International, Bishop Joey Makando, Bread of Life, Bishop Alex Mwami of Holy Ghost Firehouse from South Africa, and your hosts, Pastors Victoria and Moses Chilua. Hamnet Television, not, not just another, another channel. channel. Thank you for staying with us. Now getting into our international item. The commander of the European Union's training mission in the Central African Republic announced that activities would only be resumed in the country if the CAR forces ceased to be employed by Russian paramilitary group Wagner. The suspension of the training mission was announced in mid-December. Handover ceremony from French General Jacques Landley de Montgros to Belgium General Jacques Cabot in the presence of Vice Admiral Harvey Blanjing on the ground of the Moan camp of the EU TME. Here's a roundup of international news. The Economic Community of West African State, ECOWAS, is calling for a return of constitutional order in Burkina Faso following the recent coup. The body held an emergency summit Thursday in Accra, Ghana, to mitigate on the way forward. Following the coup in Burkina Faso last month and the situation in Mali and Guinea, where the militaries also seized power, ECOWAS, however, did not place further sanctions to Burkina Faso. They decided to maintain the sanction that was taken last week. They demanded the immediate release, without condition, of President uh, Rock uh, Mark Christian Cabore, and uh, because he resigned, so they felt there is absolutely no reason to maintain it. And uh, in fact, they went 
I don't know if I indicated that, but uh, they, if really they don't release him, they will take sanction. And secondly, thirdly, they decided that they want to see a very quick timetable for the reason of constitutional order. The Thursday summit focused on the emerging threats in West Africa region that stem from the military interference in Mali and its contagious influence in Guinea and Burkina Faso. Let's not really fall into the illusion that the military takeover will solve the problem. They cannot solve the problem, and they will not solve the problem, because we have seen it in the past. It will create and bring more problems. In the last 18 months, soldiers have grabbed power in Mali, Guinea, and Burkina Faso. Despite international pressure for a return to constitutional rule, none of the military rulers have yet to organize new elections. Residents in Burkina Faso's capital, Ouagadougou, welcomed the decision by ECOWAS not to impose sanctions on the country. The decision follows a meeting of heads of state in Accra, Ghana, on Thursday to discuss the situation in Burkina Faso, Mali and Guinea. They have thought about the situation because the situation in Burkina Faso had to be examined. It is not like the others, because our situation was almost a catastrophe. If we take agriculture, the season has not been very good for the country, which depends on its sister countries. If we have to close the borders, for example, if we have to have restrictions, I already think that this will bring the country to its knees. Last month, Burkina Faso became the third member of ECOWAS to have an elected president toppled by the military in the last two years. The commander of the European Union's training mission in the Central African Republic announced that uh, activities would only be resumed in the country if the Central African Republic forces ceased to be employed by Russian paramilitary group Wagner. The suspension of the training mission was announced in mid-December. The European Union can no longer afford to train units that are then employed by Wagner with all the allegations possible going around. It is the reputation and the defense of European values that are at stake. Since 2016, that the EU military mission has trained thousands of Central African soldiers. The country has been in a civil war since 2013. Our conditions are very simple. The first condition is to have the guarantee that the units we train are not employed by Wagner, but are employed within the sovereign framework of the employment of the national armed forces. That is the first of our conditions. The second of these conditions is to have a coherent and sustainable national defense plan. There are currently around 100 European soldiers left in the Central African Republic who are currently focusing on strategic advice to the army. We now get into our sports item. Thomas Tuchel says he did not have a contract with Osman Dembele last month and insists he is happy with Chelsea's come January transfer window. Chelsea made an inquiry about signing Dembele on deadline day after his potential move to Paris Saint-Germain stalled but talks failed to progress and the Wigner will now see out the final month of his deal at Barcelona. The Blues remain interested in signing Dembele in the summer when he will be a free agent and Tuchel has spoken highly in the past of the player he coached at Borussia Dortmund during the 2016-2017 season. The European champions experience a quiet January window with no first team arrivals or departures. Well, that sports item brings us to the end of Kamen TV main news, but before we go, here are the headlines once again. 
FDD leader Edith Nawaki's stepson hit back over the property's conflict case. BEP rejects Kawata poor results as Kawata residents remind Tayengwa to fulfill his campaign promises. Environmentalists bark in court over mining at Lower Zambezi. In international news, AU military mission in CAR sets out condition to resume operations. And in sports, Chelsea's Thomas Tuko happy with the calm window. Here's our cabinet verse of the day and it's coming from the book of 1 Corinthians 9 verse 25 and it reads, Now everyone who competes exercises self-control in everything. However, they do it to receive a crown that will fade away. But we're a crown that will never fade away. Thank you for watching. I am Precious Mzea Sakaleji. Pleasant viewing.